CompTIA A Plus Core 1 Complete Training Course. Exam Objective 2.4 Summarize Services Provided by Network Hosts. Server Roles. This might be a bit of a review for some of you, but I'm going to start this video off with a quick definition of what a server is. A server, in a logical sense, is a computing device that provides a service to other computing devices known as clients. Now a server can perform many roles within a network, and that is what this video is really about. Firstly, let's talk about DNS servers, or domain name system servers. Imagine them as the internet's phone book. When you type a website name, like www.certificationsynergy.com into your browser, this name is actually a fully qualified domain name, or FQDN. The FQDN is a more user-friendly version of an address, making it easier to remember and use. The DNS server takes this FQDN and translates it into an IP address, which is a unique set of numbers that acts like a precise address, telling your device exactly where to find the website. Without a DNS server, we would have to memorize the complicated IP addresses for every website we want to visit, much like having to remember everyone's phone number instead of just their name. Next, we have DHCP servers, which stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. These servers are like the organizers of a network, responsible not only for dynamically assigning IP addresses to each device on the network, but also for providing other essential configuration details. When a device connects to a network, the DHCP server assigns it a unique IP address, allowing it to communicate with other devices and access the internet. In addition to IP addresses, DHCP servers also provide other important configuration options, like a submit mask, which helps in identifying the network segment a device is on. The default gateway, which is the device that routes traffic to destinations outside the local network and DNS server addresses, which ensures a device can translate human-friendly domain names into IP addresses. This automatic provisioning of network settings greatly simplifies the process of connecting and configuring new devices in a network. Then there are file servers. As the name suggests, these servers provide a central location on a network where users can store and access files. This makes it easy for multiple users to collaborate and share data as they can all access the same files from different devices. Print servers play a crucial role in managing print requests within a network. They receive print jobs from various users and send them to the appropriate printer. This helps in efficiently managing multiple print jobs and printers in a large organization. Mail servers are responsible for sending, receiving, and storing emails. When you send an email, it goes through a mail server to reach the recipient. Syslog servers are used for monitoring and logging. They collect logs and diagnostic information from different devices on a network. This information is crucial for troubleshooting and ensuring the network is running smoothly. Web servers are what make websites accessible on the internet. They store the data of websites and serve this content to users' browsers when a website is accessed. Without web servers, there would be no way to view or interact with websites. Lastly, we have servers that handle authentication, authorization, and accounting. These are known as triple 80 servers, and they are a key component in network security. They are tasked with verifying who is trying to access the network, authentication, determining what they are allowed to do, authorization, and keeping track of their activities, accounting. Two common implementations of a AAA service would be RADIUS or TACAX+. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more great content.